Now let's take a look at treatment outcome assessment. We're going to look at MPV, symptom, fiber volume, and reintervention rate. You heard me mention non-profuse volume MPV quite often already. So MPV is a clinical predictor of treatment success. The higher the MPV, the um, higher chance of clinical success and better symptom improvement. If you look at the graph below over here, on the y-axis you have number of patients, on the x-axis you have MPV ratio, you can see if we made a line where 80% MPV ratio is located, you can see that's 0.8 clinical success rate. So therefore in our patient selection, in our treatment, we always try to achieve 80% MPV ratio and higher. MPV can be also correlated to re-intervention rate. So the higher the MPV, the lower the re-intervention rate. On the y-axis, you have the probability. On the x-axis, the MPV ratio. So with increasing MPV ratio, the probability of re-intervention at 12 and 24 months will also decrease as well. MPV is also correlated to fiber volume reduction as well. If you look at the top panel over here, the figure on the left, we have shrinkage at four months and MPV ratio on the x-axis. So the, the higher the MPV ratio, you're gonna get more shrinkage of the fibroid. Now, if we look at the image on the right in the top panel, you have shrinkage at 12 months. The higher the MPV ratio, this higher chance of um, shrinkage at 12 months follow-up time point. On the lower panel, panel, you're looking at example MR images before the high food treatment figure A and figure B and C are 24 months after the fiber treatment. You can see, clearly see a fiber reduction and this has 81% volume reduction. So let's take a look at symptom improvement. A study published by Funaki et al. looking at symptom severity score at three months, six, nine months up to 24 months after the treatment, you can nicely see a reduction at three months for the symptom severity score and the, the um, symptom severity score remain low and stays durable over a period of 24 months. So the next study in the lower panel, you're looking from Kim et al, looking at um, MR high food treatment of symptomatic um, uterine fibroids at three year follow up. You can see a high um, symptom severity score value at baseline, you see it decreasing at each follow up time point at three year, it remains low. Next, let's take a look at long-term clinical outcome for symptomatic submucosal fibroid. This is a retrospective study where high food patients, 245 patients, um, were compared to uterus sparing surgery patients, about 129 patients subjected to open myomectomy, laparoscopic myomectomy, and hysterectoscopic myomectomy. So this is a table comparing the patient and fibroid characteristic. So the, you can see over here between the H maximum tumor and diameter type of fibroids, whether it's type one or type two, and baseline transform symptoms severity score, were the same between the surgery group and the ablation group. And at follow-up time point six months, we very nicely see symptom relief rate of 95.9% for HIFU, 89.1% for myomectomy, and the transform symptoms severity score is about 10, um, with a mean decrease of 30.5 from baseline, and myomectomy was about eight, with a mean decrease of 25.4 from baseline. Next, let's take a look at the symptoms recurrent. So HIFU have 11.9% symptom recurrence, um, which is lower than myomectomy at 27.8%. The median recurrent time is about 36 months, between 10 to 100 months for HIFU treatment, whereas for myomectomy is about 44 months, between eight to 96 months. The cumulative rate of symptom recurrence for HIFU is at one year is about 1%, at three years about 6.8%, five is about nine, and eight years about almost 12% which is significantly lower than myomectomy, where you see 6% at one year, 12 at three years, 23% at five years, and almost 28% at eight years. In the top right-hand corner, the couple of Maya plot, you're looking nicely over time that HIFU is, the cumulative rate of symptom recurrence for HIFU is significantly lower compared to myomectomy. So based on this, the conclusion for this study is for treatment of symptomatic submucosal fibroid, HIFU provided better long-term outcome. Next, let's look at reintervention rate between HIFU and uterine arterial embolization. This study 
um, meta-analysis compared 18 articles, 1,323 patients, and showed that the intervention rate at 24 months is about 13.14% for HIFU, and this is comparable to UAE. Next, we look at HIFU versus surgical intervention. Meta-analysis of 10 study, about 4,450 patients comparing HIFU to myomectomy and hysterectomy. This is an RCT. Uh, it is include one RCT data, nine studies of non-RCT, and symptom and quality of life improvement. The results show that the uterine fibroid symptom score significantly decreased at six and 12 month follow-up for both group compared to baseline. Quality of life scores significantly increased at six and 12 month follow-up also in both groups compared to baseline. The UFS score, the decrease in UFS score was significantly higher in the HIFU group compared to surgery at six and 12 month follow-up. And there's an increase in quality of life score um, and they are higher in the HIFU group compared to surgery at six and 12 month follow-up. In terms of hospital stay, the mean duration for HIFU is in one to four days, whereas for surgery is between three to 10 days. For time to return to work for HIFU is definitely better compared to surgery. Patients underwent HIFU took about three to five days to return to work, whereas patients who underwent surgery took about six to 26 days to return to work. In terms of significant, significant complications, HIFU is between zero and 19%, whereas surgery is between three and 40%. For adverse event, HIFU is between two to 82%, whereas for surgery is between 12 to almost 99%. Um, in terms of major adverse event, HIFU is between 0 to 22% and surgery is between 10 to 38%. Next, let's look at symptom recurrence for HIFU is about 11 to 21% and surgery is about 25 to 26%. Reintervention rate for HIFU is between 1 and 14%, where surgery is between 0 to 18%. Pregnancy between HIFU and surgery are quite comparable, 1.17 to 68% for HIFU, surgery is between 1 to 67%. So what we can conclude from the study was that HIFU is superior to surgery in terms of symptomatic relief, improvement in quality of life, recovery, time to work, significant complications. HIFU is comparable to surgery when it comes to symptom recurrence, incidence of adverse events, reintervention rate, and pregnancy. Let's take a look at a case example from our hospital in Cologne. We have a 38-hour patient, intramural fibroid Funaki type 1. Patients experience symptoms such as abdominal pain during and between menses, pressure on the bladder. If you're looking at the images on the left-hand corner, you have the image of the fibroid before the treatment. During the treatment, you see temperature increase at the focal spot. Immediately after the treatment, within the same session, you can acquire a contrast enhanced MR image to assess the non perfused volume. Then you know how much of a how big of a region you have treated already. At six months follow up, you see a volume reduction of the fiber that has been treated. If you now look at symptom severity score, the score before treatment is about 56%, whereas the score after treatment is 38%. A nice decrease of symptom severity score. In terms of health-related quality of life, we're looking into concern, activities, energy and mood, self-conscious, sexual function. The pre-score is a pre-treatment score is about 66%, and then the um, post-treatment score is about 90%. A very nice increase in um, quality of life for this patient.